doers of his holy word. I want to talk to you, amen, on tonight with a sermon, with a word that is uplifting. I don't even feel like it's a, a, a sermon, so to speak, of, but a word that can push you from where you are, that can take you further than where you ever believe that you can go. I want to talk to you from the subject entitled, All I Want Is What's Mine. All right. All I want is what's mine. Amen. If you close enough, amen, to touch somebody and not look at them and say, oh, they're neighbor. Oh, oh, you're scared to talk to folks. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I don't want your house. I don't want your house. No, your stops. No, your stops. I don't want your car. I, don't want your I sure don't want your job. No, no. All I want, All I want is, what's is what's mine. If you believe that, come on and clap your hands. In this place. One thing that I have learned of a person that can speak about wanting only what's theirs. This type of person you'll never find getting jealous. You'll never find a person like this hating. Come on, get somebody. On the blessings that God will give somebody else. Because you realize what God has for you. It's for you. Nobody in hell on earth can stop what God has to do. Oh, come on, somebody on how to move. I don't believe that there's a witch, a warlock. I don't believe I have an enemy big and bad and strong enough to stop what God has ordained to come in my life.
But you knew what it was to have your walk in. You knew what it was to have a cold mustache in your place. And now that you got top keys, you don't have no high in your movie. Because you know that the Lord did her for that vision this year. You know the Lord did her and the Lord take it away. You must remain humble when God bless you. Slap somebody and tell them, stay humble.
scripture is saying. Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin. No sons. Notice now the daughters are giving their bishop and their resume, their biography. Let them know why they qualify for this blessing. They said that we were working, amen, with our father. And our father was not with that group of people that spoke against leadership. Lord, help me here. Uh, uh, we had nothing to do with this coup, uh, with this, amen, uh, expo that Cora pulled, who was a man that. That he was on the same level of the leader. Y'all better hear this here. He thought that he could speak against Amen Moses and get away with it. He was a man of influence, one of the associate pastors, you would almost say. And the Bible said it was this call that rose up against Moses. Moses, not at one time did he speak back to call. He didn't say, Stop talking about me. He didn't say, Stop putting the church down. Y'all better hear some leaders. But he simply said, Because I represent God, God is going to take care of this situation. And the Bible said, Amen. And he said, This group will die a death like nobody has ever died before. It was called, not just him, I want you to hear something, but it was Korah and his entire family. His whole family tree got the same punishment for what he did. Y'all ain't saying that here. Imagine his grandmama, his nephew, his nieces, and aunts and uncles, simply because he put his mouth on leadership. And this is why we got to learn to keep our minds off of God's mouthpieces. Look at somebody and tell them, watch your mouth. Keep your mouthpiece off of the leadership. Even if they're not doing what you think they should be doing, you should always learn how to pray. Because when you pray for your leader, oh, come on, talk to me here. When you pray for your leader, God moves through your leader. I don't know if your experience is over here, Bishop, but I told my church, amen, the other week, as a new pastor, but been preaching 22 years. I can't understand how in the world somebody would come to church Sunday after Sunday, week after week, and can't stand the pastor and hate your own church. Amen. You must have a demon or slightly retarded. Don't they talk to me? But I can see how someone would take out all that energy when all these other churches around here come over here. You should love your leader. You should enjoy all oh, you better come on and talk to me here. You should enjoy coming to your church. And if something's wrong with you loving your leader and enjoying your church, that means you in the wrong church. Come to my and tell them it's tight but it's wrong. Tight but it's right. All the Bible said, Cora died a dangerous death. Now the Bible says as these girls are talking about their father, they said he died in his own sin. That simply means he died of natural causes. They said, for whatever reason, our father did not have a son. But here that case is getting built. They said, why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he don't have a son? Give unto us, who the oldest of these women of God, a possession among the brethren of our father. I want you to see something here. Their whole situa situation begins to turn around because they did one thing, and that was ask. Come on, somebody. They didn't shout. They didn't fall out. You won't read nobody speaking in tongues. Come on here. But they opened up their mouth and asked. And the Bible tells us that we act not because we asked. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 7 that we should so that it shall be given. Come on here, somebody. And this is what the devil has done to many people. He has jacked their lives up so much and has put them on the lower level, almost to the point that even when they reach up, they still touch the ground. He keeps people so low so that you would never open your mouth and ask. Come on here. And there are some individuals that don't realize they don't have what they should have from God because they have refused to ask. Can somebody say amen? Look at how they approach their 
situation. They approach it in a positive manner. They could have easily stayed home and said, well, we got jacked by ministry, but they took a positive approach. And this is what I'm going to share with you on this last day of revival. The next battle, the next storm you encounter, change your approach. Change your perspective. Don't look at it the way you've always been looking at it, but learn how to look at it from a God angle. And in some of my reading in class, uh, we, we, we read about a story of a, a big shoe company that sends two salesmen uh, to another country. They're trying to expand this shoe company. And when they get to this island, the two salesmen check into their room and as they're walking downtown and walking into the hotel, they look around and realize that nobody has shoes. Nobody even wears shoes. Both businessmen, God help me here, go into their room. One is happy and unpacking his bag, but the other doesn't unpack his luggage. He gets on the phone and calls back to the company and says, get my ticket changed. I'm coming back home today. Nobody here wears shoes. But the other businessman in the other room, he gets on the phone and calls the company and says, send me Mountain. The blessings you ask God for, do you really desire? 
deserve it? Or oh, you would shout before my city even dance on this car right here. <laughs> you asking God for a husband, but are you wifey material? Oh, I don't get out of here. Come on, get somebody. You asking God for the house. You asking God for the job. But are you deserving of it? What have you done for God lately? I don't know if you notice this, but you got so many people that want so much from God and won't come to church but want some love. Lord, I can't get no help in here tonight. Come on here. What God to give them so much but do so little for God? I was teaching the saints over there and said, you know what, amen, you're looking for God to bless you. You're looking for God to do this, but you haven't obeyed the word. And when the faith preacher have foolishly prophesied and told you that if you give a dollar, one of these there in the Bible, if you give 20, if you give a 50, if you give a 100, because you give that one seed, God is going to give you everything you ask for. Well, I'm here to tell you that's a lie. See, real preachers ain't going to lie to you. They're going to give you the truth. God blesses those that are in covenant with him. How do I go in covenant with God? You go in covenant, number one, by taking on his name in the spiritual nature. And number two, you go in covenant by going in business with God. You go in business with God by being a tiger. God, I'm not breathing. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Come on here, somebody. The Bible talks about that when you bless the house of God with your tithes. He said, I will rebuke the devour for you. In other words, there are blessings, Lord, oh, help me preach it here tonight. There are blessings that tithers get that regular people can't get. Oh, oh man. Can I some real people in here? Don't you know when you are a tiger? He said that I will rebuke the devour. Yes. And I will open up the windows of heaven for you because you are in business with me. And when you are in tithe, you are in straight covenant with God. That's why you ought to expect some things to happen. When God bless me with a job, I don't have to give no balloons and a cake and a smiley face and one of them blow things. I expect it a call because I'm a tithe. Come on here. Touch your back and tell them I can expect it. I mean, I live in a pretty decent neighborhood, and I'm talking to a few neighbors, and they had a rash of burglaries, Bishop Johnson, in the area. And people are on high alert. They're outside with the dogs. They got flashlights, and Columbus police are making extra drives through the neighborhood. And as I talk to my neighbors, I realized something. The house to my left was broken in and robbed. The house behind me, somebody climbed in the kitchen window and cleaned the lady's jewelry drawer out. The house across the street from me, somebody broke in through the back door. But the house behind me, the house to my right, the house to my left, but guess what? I'm out of town, more than all of them, and ain't nobody come now. It's like God got protection around it. You don't need the FBI, the DA. Come on here. You got God watching you. Somebody clap your hand and give God a place. Yes. The spirit of entitlement is killing the church. The spirit of entitlement simply tells people, I can have it simply because I asked for it, but I did nothing to get it. God ought to help me in here. And we probably tell ourselves, we don't want the spirit of entitlement on us. We want to be people of the most high God that go after what we want. There are so many saints, hallelujah, like the man that's praying and asked the Lord to give him a job. And he would get up in the morning and say, Lord, bless me with a job. And after he made that prayer, he jumped back in the bed. You got to go, and go. This is where I'm trying to go. You got to go out and after what you believe. Because you got sometimes people in church that don't want to go after what they desire. Come on here, somebody. And many times when this happens, it's because they've been hanging around the wrong people. And trust me, in the scripture, but grandmama was right. Birds of a feather fly together. When you hang around people that don't want nothing out of life, guess what? The spirit that's on them. Don't jump on you. Maybe this is why I'm both wrote 
in Deuteronomy chapter 22 and 10. He wrote what is called the law of segregation. And he said, thou shalt not put a jackass in the same field with an ox. Can I preach a while here? The reason why Moses made this law of segregation, because he knows that the jackass don't work, don't do nothing. Be all over the field and just want to eat. Y'all ain't talking, I'm just telling the nature of Want to eat and do nothing. But an ox is a worker. That's why I'm telling you, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread it. I've been working, grinding, shredding out the barn. You got to tell yourself, you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, am I an ox or a jackass? Because if you look, oh, y'all ain't going to talk. I'm telling you what I'm going to say. If you're the other one, that's the behavior you're going to have. But these girls, hallelujah, said, wait a minute, we ain't going out like that. You want to look at somebody and tell them, I ain't going out like that. But the Bible said that because they approach the pastor with love and humility, notice now, they weren't like no hood chicks. I'm sorry, come on. You're from the suburbs? Excuse me. Come on, here. They didn't walk up there with no manners, with their hand on their hip, with their long manicured finger in Bishop Moses' face. They didn't have their hands on their hip, sassy with an attitude. You know, you can get a lot of things if you ask the right way. Come on in here, somebody. These women had humility. And the Bible said because they approached the, the, the pastor the right way, the Bible said, he said, you know what? I'm going to bring your cause before the Lord. He halts, Lord have mercy. He stops the whole inheritance. He stops the whole program. And the Bible said that he went in prayer for their situation. That's the kind of leader you want to ask God for. You want to say, Lord, I want to be so tight with my pastor that when I got a problem, a situation, I want them to be able to take my cause to the Lord. When the hallelujah pastor Moses took that cause to the Lord, the Bible said, hallelujah, he came back from this prayer and said that the daughters of the Lachahar, they speak right. Listen to how God is changing the law. You got to realize in all creation, the law always went to the males. Y'all ain't hear me. Only the men would get inheritances from their father. But notice how these daughters were so powerful that they got the law changed. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm a law changer. I don't care what the devil says, I'm a law changer. And everything the devil says you can't do, you can't have, you can't drive. You got to tell the devil, you must not know who you're talking to. I preach the sermon in the title, you must have me mistaken for somebody else. You got to learn how to tell the devil, you must not know who you're talking to. I'm a child of God. Tell yourself 
that which was less. And it's not how you saw it. Because they came to the tabernacle broke. But they went home millionaires. Now, hallelujah. Oh, I just, I feel the Holy Spirit. And God is trying to tell somebody something tonight. You keep your eyes on the prize. Your hand in God's hand. Everything is going to work out for your good. And what the enemy meant for evil. Lord, I feel God's anointing in this place. I said, what the enemy meant for evil. God is making it good. And there's a rich, there's a strong anointing in this church tonight. I see God filling cups until it overflows. If you need a touch like that, you want to lift your hand and say, Oh Lord, fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. And let it overflow, Lord. I need some more. I need a refill. I need a call. Come on. I need a refill. Yes, From the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. The reason why the Lord is ordering and ushering me to move in this direction because it's one thing to speak faith, but it's another thing to do faith in the name of Jesus. And you have to not just decide, you have to actually do what God said to do. And that is to have faith and move in the direction of a blessed child of God. Yes. God said, I'm giving you a charge tonight before you leave this building. Give you a charge to keep the faith, to read my word, to rebuild your prayer life. Because without those, you have nothing. And there's so that are in this room that said, preach a good sermon, but maybe it's not for me because I'm not getting child support. Maybe it's not for me because I'm living with relatives that really don't want me there. Maybe it's not for me because I have a job, but it's certainly not the pay that I need. I have so many problems. But regardless of how many problems you have, you know the solution. See, those up here, they just have the problem. But we, the people of God, believe we have a solution. And tonight, I know we still have the type of New Year's Eve in here. Tonight, I feel God said, I'm doing something in you tonight. I'm touching you where it matters the most. I'm closing your ears to the gainsayers, the liars, the doubters. And I'm opening your spirit to God. I want to, if you would allow me tonight, I want to pray. I want to touch and agree with you with this oil in the name of